Good morning, we are at Annecy a few hours before the World Championship for IIU with Chrissy Model from the United States team. How do you feel, Chrissy? I'm still waking up. We're a little bit time, time difference here. Well, Chrissy Model, for those who are not familiar with her, <clears throat> is uh, quite a living legend within the ultra running community, particularly in the States, uh, but has also been very successful in Europe, uh, at least. <clears throat> Uh, winning twice at Ultra Trail Mont Blanc and um, what are your memories from the uh, Ultra Trail Mont Blanc because you have won twice but you have also run several other times with great performances. I've done okay. Uh, 2003 and 2009 were very memorable years. 2003 was the first edition of the race and my first time racing overseas so there's a lot of special memories that come from that. 2009 was a year of a lot of different things going on in my personal life and to have the win on the international stage like that was definitely a highlight amongst some other crazy things that were happening. <laughs> Um, yeah, and just the opportunity to race overseas. I mm -hmm. never knew that running could take me. So, <laughs> <really>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from the States, what would be your best uh, racing memories? If you would, you know, to spend some victory or some experience. For example, I remember uh, the Sion record together with... Um, um, when you were running with... Uh, Which record? With Luke Nelson? Oh, the Zion. Uh, sorry, my pronunciation. Okay. Sorry about no, it. I just didn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, the Zion. How did it feel? Because that was quite a, an interesting adventure. Because you were, you took off together. Uh, we took off together. Could no. you sum up for the aficionados, for the fans? Oh, we just knew that um, Luke is a much faster, more technical runner than I am. Mm. But it was really great knowing that he would be out on the trail at the same time. Yeah. The Steets and myself, um, I'm finding myself moving away from racing and more into these adventure type yeah. runs. Uh, Darcy PQ and I ran around Mount Rainier two mm. years ago. Uh, I made an attempt on the John Muir Trail last summer with Jen Shelton. So pairing up with a good friend and having an adventure and experience out there is, uh, I guess, the next step in ultra running for me. I've really taken to the mountains because of running. Hmm. and learned a lot about weather and terrain and conditions hmm. and now applying that in a different way to a more solo self-supported adventure. Okay. Alright, um, what are your feelings about the 2015 season? I mean, you've been running long and far. Uh, they are now young runners, which are uh, extremely fast, but you still remain uh, quite competitive, to be honest. Uh, How do you feel about this season? <laughs> I feel like an old sage in the <laughs> I've been at this for, I guess, 16 years now. I ran my first ultra in 2000. Sometimes I feel like some of these people haven't been born yet, weren't born yet when I ran my first ultra. But I am um, an old sage at 37, but hey, that's okay. <laughs> Um, it's great. I love to see the new the youth coming into the sport and mm. seeing more women involved. The numbers mm. of this race are incredible. The 175 men and 109 yeah. women. So it's really exciting to have a starting line that's getting closer to that 50-50 mark. Mm. And it was a, um, really cool yesterday at the opening ceremonies to see mm. many women in all of the country's teams represented. So yeah. I, I, that's a big push for me in the sport is to encourage women to see what they can do out here because our bodies are built for endurance. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, uh, recently we've seen um, female races which are as interesting, if not more, than the guys. Uh, do you think the trend will continue? I think so. Women are competitive by nature as well. And they, they're more, it's, a, it's a different kind of competition. Competition in the sense of um, working together to see who can what mm. somebody or a group of people can achieve, mm -hmm. and I found that in my training as well. And it's it's really encouraging to be out there, <laughs> men uh, and women, really, because it's a having more women out there. It's a more of an understood collaboration of everybody working together mm. to get to a bigger goal. Mm. You in the states. Uh, you have achieved uh, almost parity in uh, street marathons. I think that just about 50-50, you know, of the runners in, uh, oh, in, in yeah, major marathons. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that uh, will come someday to ultra running? Because, for example, in Europe we got only 10% women. Uh, or maybe 20% in ultras, so it's not that much more. Yeah. What, what could be done? 
to uh, I think it's just a, a matter of time. If mm -hmm. you look way back, women haven't been in sport as long as men yeah. because of we were told for many years that our bodies weren't supposed to do. This <laughs> so we're still a young culture or, or group, mm -hmm. if you will, that is coming into sport in, in general, let alone yeah. long distance races. So I think we're well beyond not we're well beyond and we understand that our bodies are able to do this and we're <laughs> not going to have detrimental problems by doing these long distances but we still like people just need to be encouraged and have time time is a big factor yeah. for men and women but um if you feel i watched a lot of cheryl sandberg's um, tedx talks and her, and her recent book lean in and i think it actually applies to um, sport mm. as well, where okay. a lot of the responsibility can mm. fall to a female, unless there's like an equal um, understanding. Yeah. yeah, I think it, I think it's coming. <laughs> Good. Well, let's hope it, it arrives. Uh, the sooner, the better. Yeah. Thank you very much, and best of luck. Oh, thank you so much.